Okay, so now we need to work on the functionality of the buttons. So we'll just create the methods for the on click event to use. So we'll just go back to the dialog manager. And what we want to do is we're going to need to make a public method. So public void, and it needs to be public when using a button, as if it's private, the button won't be able to read from the script. So you just need to make that public so it's accessible. I'm going to call this continue player dialog. And then what we're going to do is create one also for the NPC. Okay, so what this function is going to need to do is just check that there's actually another sentence to display. It's going to need to empty the dialog text display and then begin typing the new sentence. So we'll say if player index is less than the player dialog sentences dot length, and we have to use minus one here as the player index is zero based. And if it returns, if they say if there's four elements in the array, it needs to return three as that will be the last element. And just to match the player index, we use minus one. First of all, we're going to have to increment the player index. So we'll say player index plus plus. So it will move to the next element in the array. And then we'll say player dialog text dot text equals string dot empty. And we want to use string dot empty rather than just empty quotation marks like that because that's still technically a string and can cause garbage. So it's better to use string dot empty. Then what we actually want to do is just type the next sentence in the array. So we'll just say start coroutine of type player dialogue. So we're going to need to do the same for the NPC. So we're going to say if the NPC index is less than the NPC dialogue sentences dot length minus one, then MPC index plus plus, just increment it, uh, MP, MPC dialogue text dot text equals string dot empty, dot coroutine of type MPC dialogue. Awesome. Awesome. He said just before we test it, what we need to do is populate the on click event for each of the buttons. So what we do is we'll pass in the dialog manager. Now the function we want to fire is in the dialog manager and that is continue NPC dialog. And we're calling continue NPC dialog from the player, obviously to, to continue the conversation with the NPC. So for the NPC, we'll come over, pass in the dialog manager and the function we're going to fire will be continue player dialog. Save that, test it. You see that it works, but the buttons remain. And I don't know if you don't notice, but the NPC started on their second sentence and skipped the first sentence. And this is due to the fact that we're incrementing the index when the button is clicked. We just need to have a way so that it increments the index after the first sentence has been read. So what we'll do is we'll just come up to the top. We'll make a private Boolean. We'll just call this dialogue started and that will initialize as false. And what we want to do now is just check, see that if the dialog has started, then we want to increment the player index. But else, if it hasn't started, then what we want to do is say dialog started equals true. So the first time this runs, the dialog hasn't started, so it won't increment the index and it will just set it to true. So then the next time it runs, it will increment the index and we'll just need to do the same for the NPC. Awesome. Now you could just put brackets around this as well. Uh, if you're used to seeing if statements with the brackets, but I just haven't because you don't need them for single lines. If there was multiple lines of code after this, you would need the brackets for it to remain within scope. And so before we test this, we'll also just need to make sure that the button deactivates when it is clicked. So when the continue player dialog function is called, it's the NPC button that has been clicked. So we'll say NPC continue button dot set active is false. And then from the continue NPC dialog, we'll say the player continue button dot set active is false. Cool. So as we play this, we can see that the continue buttons now disappear when we click on them and the NPC is reading from the correct sentence. 
Now we just need to work on open and closing the speech bubbles as well as just clearing them at the appropriate times. What we'll first actually work on now is the actual animations of the speech bubble. So what we're gonna do is just come over and create a folder and just call this speech bubble animation. And what we'll do is within here, we'll just create a animation controller for them to use. So we'll just call that speech bubble controller. Okay, so we need to come over to our speech bubbles and add an animator to them. And I like to move them up to the top. So just add component and then find animator and then right click and move them up. Well, you don't have to do that. I just prefer doing that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the same speech bubble controller for both of these. So what we'll do is just right click, create empty. And we're actually going to call this player speech bubble container. So container. And as I've right clicked and hit create game object, it's created this object with the exact same transform data as the player speech bubble. So what we can do is just make the speech bubble a child object of the container. And we need to do the same for the NPC. So create, drag it out, and then make the speech bubble a child of the of the container. So now we'll begin working on the animations of the speech bubbles. So just come over to the animation window. And if you don't have that open already, you can just come over to window uh, and then animation. And with the speech bubble selected, what I want to do is, as the speech bubble has an animator, we're able to create uh, animations for it. So just want to hit create. And then within the speech bubble folder, which we are in, we just want to call this open speech bubble. And then we also want to create one. So we're just creating now for close speech bubble. Cool. So. For the open speech bubble, what we're going to do is just going to hit record. And so when the animation starts, we want the scale of the speech bubble to be zero, 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 zero on all axes. And then at about half a second, we just want to put that back to one, one, one. So it's just that full scale again. And so for the close, we'll do the reverse which is just make sure you've got record on and then we'll start off at one 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 so one 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 after half a second we'll just put that back to zero 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 so it just gets rid of it and then that is pretty much the open and closing of the speech bubbles so as you can see it works for both of them and although this one has a negative scale attached to it it hasn't caused any issues and that is due to the fact that uh, it is animating within the object space rather than world space so to get rid of that looping, what we need to do is just come over to this uh, animation clips within the project file. And uh, so close, close speech bubble, and then just disable the loop time and as well for the open. So the next thing we want to do is come over to the animator window. And if you don't have that open, you would go to window animator, but mine is just docked here. And you want to just select the speech bubble. So you can see the animations available to the speech bubble controller. And what we want to actually do is we're just going to create an empty state as we don't want them just to open without being triggered. So this empty state will be the default. So right click and hit set as default layer. And then what we want to do is just make a transition from this default layer, from this new state, this empty state, to the open speech bubble, and then from open speech to closed speech bubble, and then back from closed speech to open speech bubble. Okay. So to make these transitions actually work, what we're going to need is a few parameters. And the parameter we're going to be using is a trigger. So I'm just going to call the first trigger open and call the second trigger close. So what we're going to do is transition from the empty new state to open just by adding a condition. And that condition will be when we trigger the open trigger. <laughs> and then to transition from open to close, we'll need to use the close trigger. So if you just hit the add trigger and then make sure you have close selected and then from close to open we need the open trigger perfect so now that we've got the animation set up uh, what we'll do is we'll just open the dialog manager back up and we're going to need references to those animation controllers so what we'll do here 
is we'll just say serialized field private animator and we're just going to call that player speech bubble animator and then we're going to need the serialized field call that private animator and that's obviously mpc speech bubble animator cool so what we actually do is just add a header for that as well and just call that animation controllers just come back to the dialog manager and once it compiles we'll just add the references to the animation controllers so we'll pass in the player speech bubble for the player npc speech bubble for the npc okay so once we've got references to the speech bubble what we'll actually do is we're going to come back to the speech bubble and we're actually going to zero it out so that by default it is not displayed now the speech bubbles are set up to be controlled through script so what we'll do is we'll come back to the dialog manager and actually open it in visual studio okay so in order for the animations to play first and then type the dialogue we're going to need to make use of another coroutine so what we're actually going to do is convert this continue player dialogue to a, con a coroutine and the same for the continue npc dialogue but just before we do that we're just going to create another private float so it's going to come up to here and just say private float and we're just going to call this speech bubble animation delay now as the animations only play for half a second what we're going to do is we're going to set this to 0.6f so that it gives the time for the animation to complete so we're actually going to need to convert the start dialogue the continue player dialogue and the continue npc dialogue so what we'll do is we'll just come over so instead of private void we'll say private i enumerator and what we're going to do is before we actually type the dialogue we're going to need to wait for the animation to play so we're going to need to say yield turn new wait for seconds and the time we want to wait for is the speech bubble animation delay okay so now we actually need to trigger the animation so you need to just say player speech bubble animator dot set trigger and then the trigger that we want to set will be open so we'll just say open and then what we'll do is we'll just copy this across for this else statement so pass that in and then we'll say npc speech bubble animator dot set trigger passing in open cool so now as start dialogue is a coroutine we need to say start coroutine and the coroutine will be start dialogue okay so if we press play you can see that there's actually a slight delay and then it opens so you need to come over to the animator and then for the transitions which you need to disable exit time and then that way they when they're triggered it will happen instantly instead of waiting for the animation to finish playing so if we press play again you see it happens instantly and cool so that is the start dialogue converted into the coroutine so next we need to do is come down to the continue player dialogue and then we need to make that into an I enumerator convert that to a coroutine and we're actually going to convert this from public to private and then we'll just trigger we'll have another function to call this for the button so now if we hit the continue player dialogue we need the npc speech bubble to close and then we need the player's speech bubble to open and then type the dialogue so what we need to do is we're going to need two yield statements so i'm just going to just copy them and paste them out now and then so what we need to do is we'll say mpc speech bubble animator dot set trigger and then we're going to say close and then the next thing we're going to say is the player speech bubble animator dot set trigger and that's going to be open what we also want to happen is when you click the button we just want to get rid of the text that's in the speech bubble so we'll just say mpc dialogue text dot text equals equals string dot empty after clearing the npc dialogue text and after the animation delay i'm going to say is the player dialogue text dot text equals string dot empty 
me and then we're going to open it yeah so that just makes sure that we have cleared the dialogue text before open and closing the speech bubbles okay so we're going to need to do the same thing for the npc dialogue so we need to come over public void to a private i enumerator and then we can just copy the animation delays and we'll do the same thing but the opposite so what we'll say is the player dialogue text dot text equals string dot empty player speech bubble animator dot set trigger close and then so then there's a the animation delay and then we'll say mpc dialogue text dot text equals string dot empty and then mpc speech bubble animator dot set trigger open so that's the coroutines set up so now we just need to create some new function for the buttons to call as there are no longer any public methods for them to call so we'll say public void call this one trigger continue player dialogue i mean if you find think of a better name than than that then please use it but for now public trigger continue player dialogue and then public void trigger continue mpc dialogue awesome this is just literally just going to call the coroutines so we're going to say start coroutine and we'll say continue player dialogue and then for the trigger continue npc we'll say start coroutine continue npc dialogue awesome so come over to the speech bubbles and then you say dialogue manager trigger continue npc dialogue for the player speech button and for the npc dialogue manager and trigger continue player dialogue so now that's set up we'll just give that a test cool so that all seems to be working it's reading the right sentences they're opening and closing the only issue is is that it doesn't know when the dialogue has ended so therefore it tries to open the next speech bubble